Hi there, and welcome to the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder video. Today, we're going to talk about the benefits of using the 2.5 quart clear plastic pail or bucket style feeder, and what sets this feeder apart from the other feeders that are out there on the market. Looking at the feeder, we have provided a measurement gauge in liters, ounces, and quarts, just for your mixing needs. Makes for a nice little feature to use. Well, we've had this question come up, so I'll go ahead and answer it now. Yes, the feeders do go upside down, and they do go inside of your beehive, just like that. Upside down, inside your beehive, once you've placed your sugar syrup inside, of course. Now, taking a look at the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder lid, you can see that the entire lid is microperforated. This is one of the major differences our feeder offers. We'll go over in a bit why this is important and how this sets this feeder apart. Also, our lids come off nice and easy. They do not require a tool for removal, but yet it is still strong and snaps on nice and tight, keeping it in place when you flip your feeders upside down. So we'll go ahead and place the lid back onto the feeder, making sure to lock it all the way around nice and tight. Then next, I'm going to show you how to mix up some sugar syrup using your Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder. But first, just as a note, the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder has not been tested, nor is it recommended for use with fructose syrups. I just recommend that you use cane sugar as the source for your sugar syrup to feed your bees. There are reasons to this that you may have heard or read about, but today, I'm just going to recommend that you use cane sugar for your syrup. All right, so now we'll just pour one full Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder bucket of sugar into your mixing pot, then add one full Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder bucket of warm water, and that is going to give you a one-to-one -one sugar syrup ratio. If you wanted a two-to-one, you'd just use one full Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder bucket of sugar, and then a half a bucket of warm water, and that'll give you a two-to-one sugar syrup ratio. So go ahead and break up all those clumps and mix the water and sugar together, and then we'll go ahead and turn the stove on to about a medium, to about a medium low heat. You don't want it on too high because you don't want that sugar sticking to the bottom. I'll go ahead and keep stirring occasionally and get that sugar dissolved evenly throughout your pot. And here you can add any essential oils or lysithin granules if you want. If you go to collinsbeefeeder.com, there it is on your screen, I have a recipe page for you if you'd like to make a healthy batch of sugar syrup for your bees. Here, I'm going to use a measuring cup as a scoop to transfer the syrup over into the feeder. Notice how I'm doing this in the sink. Trust me, this makes for an easier cleanup if you end up drizzling during transfer or you spill your bucket. Well, just kind of like I'm doing here. But there you go. Look and notice the clearness of the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder. You can see the syrup level in there. To me, this is extremely important. I do not like getting into my beehives and disturbing my bees if they don't need to be. With other pale style feeders out there, you have to get into your hive, grab and shake them just to see how much sugar syrup is left. But with the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder, all you have to do is lift open your hive top, peek inside, and see how much sugar syrup is left. Simple, but very important. Now make sure you don't fill your feeders all the way to the top. Just leave a little bit of space to allow that air bubble to cause a vacuum when you flip your feeders upside down. Next, we'll go ahead and snap and lock down the lid nice and tight all the way around there. And we'll gather all the feeders up and head on out to the bee yard. All right, we're inside one of my hives now and I have a medium super sitting here on top of the hive. And this will be the space for the feeder. If you're using a 10 frame hive, you can use up to four feeders at the same time. Or if you're using an A frame hive, you can use up to two. Here I'm using these 3 8 inch wood spacers that I made in the wood shop from scrap wood. If you don't have any scrap wood laying around, you could be creative and glue some popsicle sticks together or use a thick stick from the ground, and that'll work just as well. But here is another important thing about the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder. By using these spacers, we are giving the bees the ability to access the entire lid. Again, when we flip the feeder over onto the spacers, the bees will be able to access all the micro perforations on the lid. This is another feature that sets this feeder apart from the rest. With the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder, you have the ability to help control the speed or rate at which the bees take down the syrup. Here we are approaching winter and we want the bees to get as much syrup as they want, so by adding spacers they can. However, in situations where you want to slow them down or say your queen is still laying and you don't want the bees to crowd her out by filling up too many cells with syrup, take the spacers out and simply place the feeder right on top of the frames. This will allow the frames to block access to some of the holes, thus slowing down the rate at which the bees access the syrup.
Now here we are three and a half days later. And let's take a peek inside this hive. Oh, cool. Because the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder is clear, I can see how much syrup is left. And that doesn't look too bad. A two and a half quart bucket three and a half days later, and I have just a little bit of feed left. Well, what we used was a two to one sugar syrup ratio here in the fall as we're getting ready for winter. But also notice how calm and stress-free these bees look in this hive. It's because they're getting fed well. I'm going to go ahead and lift up the feeder here for you so you can see how the bees are reacting. Now look how they're covering the entire lid. They look stress-free and they're not competing or crowding themselves for a feed hole. Now let's take a look at this lid from another pail feeder that is out there on the market. There is a screen, a plug style, but notice here how small the feed access is. It's about the size of a quarter, and even for a small size hive with 10,000 plus bees, feeding on something that small to me would be stressful and very inefficient. Also, that screen is tough to clean. But the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder lid, like I have shown you, is entirely microperforated and provides ample space for your bees to feed stress-free and aids in higher productivity and fast hive buildups. The bees can take down that sugar syrup as fast as they need to and draw out comb at tremendous rates. I have experienced wonderful results using this feeder, and like many of you, I have tried many other feeders out there and spent lots of money doing so, only to become disappointed. But trust me, when I figured out the usefulness of the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder and its ability to control the feed rate, this is all I use and will ever use from this point on. In this hive, I did not have any spacers with me, but as you can see, I used a stick, which as I said before, works just as well. But just make sure that the stick is thick enough so that you can lean one edge of your feeder onto the stick or use two sticks to give that bee space so that they can access the entire lid. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and gather up all the feeders and I'm going to head inside and show you how to properly clean the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder. Okay, notice that this lid has a lot of icky propolis on it and yes, it is still good and very useful. This just happens when you leave the feeder in your hive too long or they take down the sugar syrup too fast. They'll go ahead and start to propolize the holes. But don't worry about that. There's a unique way to clean these lids. You can just use a cap scratcher. You can use this nifty little thing here I call a thumbtack. Just go ahead and find all your propolized holes here. And on a lid like this, it seems kind of bad. It could take up to about five minutes to clear out all these little holes. Just keep poking that goo right on through and just keep moving and poking there. And you keep a lid like this clean, it can last you about several years. And this crud up here, you can scrape it off if you want. But that pine sap is sticky and messy, so if you start to smear it around, just be careful not to get it on your hands. But the important thing is just making sure that all those holes get cleared out. Alright, I recommend using warm water to clean the bee feeder buckets and lids. I don't like using detergents and soaps because it's just not needed. Just use warm water and a rag just to wipe it all out, and that should do the trick. In this bucket, I have some lysothin granules and some essential oil residue left, and I'm just getting all that cleaned out and wiped out and then rinsed. But another nice thing about the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeders is that they stack nicely. You can stack quite a few of them up and place them inside a kitchen cupboard or a garage cupboard, or you can go ahead and place them inside of a tote until they're needed again. They're just easier to store than those bulky top-high feeders and frame feeders. And there you go, all cleaned. Well, that was the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder in action. You may purchase through our website at collinsbeefeeder.com or from several of our retail suppliers located on our site if you have other purchases you need to make with them. Thank you for watching this video, and remember, feed your bees the right way using the Collins Ultimate Bee Feeder.